While most old school wrestling fans will remember Gorilla Monsoon as the voice of WWF television throughout much of the 80s and early 90s, history buffs will know that Gorilla Monsoon was a larger than life wrestler who became a top heel and babyface in Vince McMahon Sr's WWF. Monsoon, to this day, doesn't get the credit he deserves for helping build the New York Territory. He was a large shareholder in the WWWF who booked several territories for the company and when Vince McMahon Jr. took over operations, Gorilla Monsoon became a confidant and advisor to the young Vince McMahon. Later in his WWF career, Monsoon could be found at the entrance curtain of arenas watching over matches frequently and ready to give advice for wrestlers coming to and from the ring. In his honour, this area of the arena, where the WWE now set up a station to produce shows, is known as the Gorilla Position. Of course, when his in-ring days came to an end, Gorilla's work at the commentary desk and as a TV host was nothing short of phenomenal. Gorilla's distinctive voice and banter with Bobby Heenan is fondly remembered by fans, but you may be surprised to learn that, at the time, Wrestling Observer readers voted Gorilla as the worst wrestling TV announcer a record six times. It appeared, at the time, that those who bought Meltzer's dirt sheets weren't too fond of Monsoon's work in comparison to the likes of Gordon Soley or Lance Russell who were, in fairness, maybe much more serious than Gorilla, but hey, I loved Gorilla at the announce desk. What I wouldn't give to hear Gorilla and the brain call matches from today's WWE shows, now that would be interesting. So in this video we will look at the life and the career of Gorilla Monsoon. Real name Robert James Morella? Gorilla Monsoon was born in New York on June 4th, 1937. He was a standout school and college athlete, known affectionately as Tiny, by his teammates. He found his true calling in 1959 when local wrestling promoter Pedro Martinez discovered him, thanks to his unbelievable size. Gorilla was 6 foot 2 and weighed around 330 pounds when he first started wrestling professionally. By the end of his career he was up around 375 pounds, but at times he actually weighed 400 pounds. Have you ever wondered why Jesse Ventura would call Gorilla Monsoon Gino? Well, Gorilla first wrestled under the name Gino Morella an Italian-American good guy who would sing in Italian before his matches. The name Gino stuck with Gorilla among friends, hence why Ventura would call him Gino at the commentary desk. Gino quickly realised that he could make more money as a heel and he developed his Gorilla Monsoon character. Gorilla Monsoon was born on a farm. He travelled across America wrestling bears, speaking no English and eating raw meat. The Gorilla Monsoon character was tremendously successful both financially and creatively. Fans were legit afraid of Gorilla Monsoon and when he entered into a series of matches with Bruno San Martino, fans got so anxious that one particular brave soul jumped into the ring and broke a wooden chair over Monsoon's head. Gorilla developed a friendship with Vince McMahon Sr and when Vince reformed the Capital Wrestling Corporation into the World Wide Wrestling Federation, Gorilla Monsoon became a one-sixth shareholder within the company. As stated at the top of this video, this led Gorilla to becoming a booker for the WWF and an advisor to Vince Sr, something he would also be for Vince McMahon Jr down the road. Gorilla continued working in the World Wide Wrestling Federation, having a lucrative feud with Bruno Sammartino and finding success tagging with Killer Kowalski. He had great success as a heel, but in 1969 he decided to turn babyface, where he helped his old rival Bruno Sammartino and feuded with the likes of superstar Billy Graham. The 1976 confrontation between Gorilla Monsoon and Muhammad Ali is the stuff of legend. Ali was scheduled to face Antonio Inoki and to get some publicity for the match, he decided to confront Gorilla Monsoon after a match in Philadelphia. Ali ended up getting put in Gorilla's airplane spin and thrown to the mat. 
keeping kayfabe alive, Gorilla Monsoon would never say if the confrontation was pre-planned or if the confrontation was a shoot. Quote Gorilla, I was in the ring when Ali jumped through the ropes, kicked off his shoes, tore off his shirt and began screaming at me. I picked him up and tossed him to the mat with a giant swing. But I gave him a break and didn't use my Manchurian splash. I never seen him before and I haven't seen him since. Gorilla had become a much loved wrestler in Vince McMahon Sr's WWF, but it was time for him to wind down and take a backstage role within the company. Monsoon put his career on the line in a match against Ken Patera, a match that he lost in 1980. He would make sporadic ring appearances afterwards, but his full time days were over. Vince Jr. took over as owner of the WWF, but his father told him to take care of employees who had been loyal to the company. One of these men was Gorilla Monsoon. Gorilla decided to sell his shares within the company in exchange for a guarantee of lifetime employment. It makes you wonder though, had Gorilla not have sold those shares, how rich the man would have became in the years that followed? I'm sure there's much more to it than this and it's really not that simple, but it's still something to think about. Anyway, Vince Jr. stuck to his word, Gorilla became a prominent backstage worker and by 1982 he was at the commentary desk along with Jesse Ventura. Ventura and Monsoon set a standard for the heel and babyface dynamic at the commentary desk, something that wasn't really done on television shows at the time and certainly not to this level of success. Jesse Ventura and Gorilla called five of the first six WrestleManias together, missing out on WrestleMania 2 due to the event being in multiple arenas. Altogether though, Gorilla called the first eight WrestleMania pay-per-views. When Ventura left the WWF, he was replaced on commentary by Monsoon's primetime wrestling co-host, heel manager Bobby the Brain Heenan. I have talked about Heenan and Gorilla already in my Bobby Heenan video and I don't want to tread over old ground, but I do feel I have to reiterate once again that the chemistry Monsoon and Heenan had was truly something special. Gorilla Monsoon was the perfect guy for Heenan to bounce off. The two had incredible timing in terms of comedy and they both complemented each other's styles of presentation and character. People legitimately tuned in to WWF Primetime and other shows just so they could specifically enjoy the interactions between Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. That's how good they were. Could you imagine someone telling you they tuned into Raw because they enjoyed the interactions between Michael Cole and Corey Graves? Gorilla stepped down from full-time commentary in 1993, making way for another commentating legend to fill his shoes none other than Jim Ross. He did though return to commentary at the 1994 King of the Ring and he also covered a few episodes of Raw that year. Gorilla's last full-time commentary role was at the 1994 Survivor Series and in the same year he was also inducted into the WWF Hall of Fame. Gorilla focused on his backstage responsibilities from here, but he still found time to become the on-screen WWF president, replacing Jack Tunney. For those who don't know, the WWF president was simply an on-screen authority figure who would set up matches, resolve disputes and put the heel wrestlers in their place. Gorilla, in storyline, was attacked by Vader, which made him step away from the role for a little while. But he returned at WrestleMania 12 where he ordered the Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels Iron Man match to go into overtime. Gorilla was the president of WWF until mid-1997 as he was forced to give up the job due to health concerns. He was replaced by Sergeant Slaughter. Gorilla was not seen on TV again until WrestleMania 15 where he was a judge in the Brawl for All contest between Bart Gunn and Butterbean. Monsoon was suffering from diabetes and he had become very frail. Fans were quite shocked at how he looked at WrestleMania 15. Because of his frail appearance and rapidly declining health, the camera only focused on Monsoon during his introduction as a judge, for which he received a standing ovation. Robert Morella, better known as Gorilla Monsoon, 
passed away at the age of 62 on October 6, 1999 in his New Jersey home. He passed due to heart failure brought on by complications of diabetes. Gorilla has been immortalised in wrestling. As stated earlier, the backstage area behind the curtain is known as the Gorilla Position, named so as it's here you could find Gorilla Monsoon in the later days of his career. The Gorilla Position is not just at WWE shows as other companies have also named this area after the legendary WWE superstar. There is no greater tribute that I can think of in wrestling, as at every single show that the WWE puts on, the name Gorilla must get mentioned numerous times in any single day. <laughs>